Amen. Amen. We thank the Lord this evening and give him praise. So we want to look at um, the next teaching which goes hand in hand with restitution after being born again. Um, not when one you can say this comes first, this comes second. Um, they can happen on in one go, they can happen at the same time and then um, you can continue. Restitution is something you continue but why that is that um, the next thing we have to that we ensure is being done when we get born again is being baptized in water. Father we pray this evening that you speak to us again Lord as we sit at your feet Precious Father, being taught in these wonderful class, we pray, Lord, that your word will be life um, in, in our lives, will quicken our mortal bodies. Thank you, Lord, in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So we are looking at water baptism as we heard yesterday that repentance, oh, sorry, as we heard, yeah, Yesterday, repentance is um, a definite experience, and this evening we talked about um, restitutions. Also, um, when we look at water baptism, which follows, you know, once one has received salvation, and then you've been discharged, you've been acquitted, you've been just said you can go, which is quite a very, you know, overwhelming thing. So, in gratitude, one wants to know what next to do. And then um, it can put you into tears because you're not supposed to have gotten that freedom, but it's now being given to you. So you want what next? What else can I do? Anyway, the miracle has been done. The next thing is water baptism. And what is water baptism? And then we see it is the immersion in water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit immersing the person in water and one can ask why should that happen and why should it go and baptism is not what you know you convince people to do actually it comes also spontaneously or being taught somebody may not know and they're being told so it comes when one says i have decided to follow jesus a typical example is the book of Acts chapter 8, verse 35 to 38. Um, then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. So he was going reading um, the book of Isaiah and couldn't understand what. So the Spirit of the Lord led Philip down to him. And Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? And he says, how can I, when no one explains to me? So Philip took him and explained everything. And then he was like, what? Look, there's water. What will stop me from being baptized? He says, well, do you believe in Christ Jesus? Yes, I do. Not after what I'm reading. Not after telling me this. Why would I continue in sin? Please get me baptized. Amen. Definite experience. So also in the house of Colinus, in Acts chapter 10 from verse 46 to 48. And for they had them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that they should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Peter, in the revelation, the Lord revealed to him the house of Colonus and sent him there. He wouldn't have gone ordinarily because they are Gentiles. But the Lord had to use that means to take him. 
and when he got there explaining the coming of our lord who he is the death on the on, on, on the cross the price he paid what he purchased for us oh the holy ghost came down on all the household of calling us it was awesome and then peter said what then if they are repented in so much that the holy spirit came on them then we have to do water baptism that's not much again we can so and they brought them out in our 16 30 to 34 it's another story of the them the philippian jailer when they took um, paul and silas into prison because they were asked not to preach and what happened and when at night as they were singing the holy ghost came down and the doors of the prison swung open everybody with chains it just got broken the the jailer came out and then drew sword to kill himself and paul screamed out say don't we are all here god is just showing forth his power hallelujah amen and the man was thrilled and they took him to them his word the word of god about jesus he he there's nothing else to tell him no 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 argument no convincing he's seen with their, his own eyes that this is real he said please what must i do to be saved and they told him and he and his house gay got born again and then he took them that washed them of all the stripes and then straight away they baptized him and his family because they've given their life to the lord so why the water baptism why would we do water baptism water baptism is one of the strong pillars of christian foundations that hold the you know the 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 temple together and we stand collapse it helps the pillars is one of the strong foundations that hold the pillar so strong that it doesn't collapse a structural engineer we know the right size and the rods and the pillars and then all that so that whatever he's adding on to that building we stand strong so is water found water water baptism as one of the foundational blocks so um when you build rightly it will stand very strong so most christians have been casual about you know water baptism without understanding the importance and uh, why they should do it so we are all happy to say people are being baptized but they don't know why they're being baptized it's a common thing especially as the days are going so fast and all these false prophets who do not know the bible are coming in play what do you see nobody's thought so so many things about water baptism which we we'll look at the end of this section the errors around it but the most important thing is that people who even genuinely get born again don't know why they're being baptized so they just get them to the baptism class and just said, oh, you need to be baptized with the Philippian jello. And but you need to let one know exactly why. Because why did Jesus allow himself to be baptized and told us to go and do it? Now, come with me. Let's see why the water baptism. Number one, it is commanded. Very commanded in Matthew chapter 28. 18 to 20 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you all way even unto the end of the earth amen hallelujah that's the word it says go ye into the world preach the gospel to every creature baptize them jesus commanded it in mark 16 15 and 16 and he said unto them go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized 
he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not shall be damned Jesus said do it why he did it himself and the reason is to fulfill all righteousness number two reason why we get baptized in water to fulfill all righteousness in Matthew chapter 3 7 13 to 17 then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him but John forbade him saying I have need to be baptized of thee and comest thou to me and Jesus answered said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased jesus said suffer it now let it be so now for it is thus for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness so when you get born again so being immersed in water for baptism is to fulfill the righteousness of God in you. Amen. A kind of a seal is a done deal. You did it with all your heart. You did it with all your mind. You know why you have done it. You recognize the power and efficacy of the blood of Yeshua. You've been in the dark for a long time. Is now time to carry on in the new you don't want to go back to satan again he said don't deal it is sealed it i'm fulfilling my righteousness in him hallelujah so the third reason why we get baptized is it signifies the burial and the resurrection of our lord yeshua jesus i want to show it because that is what is working for me in the book of Romans chapter 6 from verse 3 to 13 you can read all but let's pick out some let's start from 3 so it says know ye not that as many of us that were baptized unto Christ unto Jesus Christ were baptized into his death therefore we are buried with him in baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. So, what the Bible is saying here, that it signifies if we are not if, if we get baptized in him, we identify with his death. He's taking away our sin. No more compromising. No more backsliding. The knowledge of these will help you to stand strong. Look, the old man is dead. He's been crucified. He's gone to the cross. I'm now a new man. So you don't meddle with sin anymore. Not at all. Because you now know why. And the reason of your new state. Baptism, being buried, put in the water as your head goes in, it dawns on you that the old man is gone, is buried. When we teach our new believers days as they come to you know, class to know why they should be baptized, it's good to stress this so that even when Satan comes with temptations and trials to pull them back, they will tell him no. I'm going to be baptized or I've been baptized. I've buried the old. It no longer lives. I've resurrected a newness of life. 
in verse 10 he says for in that he died he died unto sin once but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourself to be dead in, indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, I am dead to sin once. I am now resurrected with him. I now reckon myself as a new man in Christ Jesus. And he says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof, neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. No more. No more. This gives you, you know, the um the, the ability to withstand because you are now operating in knowledge that that once in a lifetime baptism had buried everything no more will i sub sin no more will you sub sin and the lost no more will you we obey it neither will we yield our members or anything about us to instrument of unrighteousness unto sin no more it seals it it's a done deal each time it comes trials temptation and it clicks no i've been immersed i've buried it you won't go back again. It's a declaration of the new state. Number three, declaring the new. No, number four is to declare the new state. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, verse 15, verse 12 to 15, it says them buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God who had raised him from the dead. And ye being dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, had he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the his cross. And have spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it. Wow, that's the interesting place. Having spoiled principalities and power, he made a shoe of them openly when John baptized him at Jordan. As soon as he came out, heaven opened and a voice declared it. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It declares our new state that now we've been buried with him in baptism. Hey, wherein also we are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. Who had raised him from the dead. We have been raised. We are now operating under the unction of the living God. He that raised him had also raised us up. And that's what water baptism signifies. And he says, and you being dead in your sins and trespasses and the uncircumcision of the flesh, I'm declaring it that I'm dead to sin and my trespasses and the uncircumcision of my old life gone. Amen. Gone. That's what it is. You know, it gives you joy because Christianity, being born again, is a glorious experience. Powerful one. You can't trade it for anything. Actually, you're coming out from the dark. That's no way you want to go back. You want to show forth, declare the new state that you are in now. Another um, significance on why we do it is new ID badge new identity badge galatians chapter 3 26 and 27 for ye are all the children of god by faith in christ jesus for as many of you as have been baptized into christ have put on christ i'm now putting him on wow i'm now putting him on is my new uniform it's right there on, on me so no way again i'm showing forth that look it signifies my new id badge you know when you start walking in a new place um they will give you a badge of 
course is that a lanyard or a badge when you get an award in school they will give you a new badge when you get an award or anything a new badge of honor so water baptism signifies a new badge of honor hallelujah as many of you have, have been baptized into christ have put on the new uniform the new badge and i put christ on i've been in the water i've resurrected i'm a new man i'm happy to show off or to share everyone the new me amen the new covenant me i'm now in a covenant relationship with elohim hallelujah i'm now a goer with christ all things have passed away all things have become new i can show forth here is my badge this is my identity water baptism so brethren is that new dress the new clothes and then whatever the new robe and amen and so it is so brethren what uh, is here as we read the book of Ma um acts 2 38 peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you so what is the criteria what is the condition for being born again for being baptized you must be born again there is no need baptizing anyone who is not born again let's see Acts 2 38 then peter said unto them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the holy ghost and jesus said it straight in the book of mark he says and they that will receive him will be what baptized he made it very very clear and then that is not about baptizing anybody it's those who are born again he says and he said unto them go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believeth and is baptized so don't go and baptize anyone you just grab on the street because you want them to come to your church and to increase the number and put a yoke on them an unbeliever is still an unbeliever don't put them in water it will be like putting a dirty cloth in water and hanging it out you can imagine a painter just came in or a farmer came in from the field with all those with all the dirty clothing and just put it in water without um soap just hang it out there so you've not washed anything the contours will come out the dress will even stink to stink that's what it is when you baptize one who is not born again so it's those who are born again you've not washed that dress you still need water so there must be salvation first before it can happen acts chapter 2 41 and they that gladly received his word were baptized and the same day um they were added unto them about three thousand souls they that gladly with joy received the word repented of their sin and took on the salvation that jesus has offered to us free they've agreed to become the sons of god as the bible says as many as received to them he gave the power to become the sons now they said can i get baptized hallelujah in luke 3 7 then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come. This was John the Baptist. As people were coming to be baptized of him, and what was his message? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And is that those that repented were those that he baptized. So don't go ahead to baptize anyone at church. So pastors who do that, people just come in and you grab them and get them baptized. They wouldn't even know why they get baptized. They are still way, way, way on the scene and then happy to go back to it. It would be a ridicule. Acts 19 verse 4 and 5. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him. 
which should come after him that is on Jesus Christ that's what John did believe in the name of our Lord Jesus for the remission of your sins that your sins will be no more then you can go on to fulfill all righteousness take on the new identity badge then you can go on to show forth his praise in your life which is water baptism at chapter 8 12 and 13 we um but when they believed philip preach uh, when but but when they believed philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of god and the name of jesus christ they were baptized both men and the women then simon himself believed also and when he was baptized he continued with philip and wondered behold the miracles and sign which were done it was those that were ministered to those who repented those who gave their life so we can see all these in the bible even in the book of Acts 16 14 and 15 and a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshipped God, had us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul, and when she was baptized and her household. Amen. I hope I've said that enough. So water baptism is not just what you get on the class, okay, those who get born again, we're doing water baptism. A lot of people do it. They can baptize 20, 30 people. Is, it, is that person born again? Have they repented of their sin? Have they received Jesus as Lord and personal Savior before you can go on to baptize them? And then in Acts chapter 22, 13 to 18, that was the story of Saul himself when he got baptized. He saw the revelation, he saw the trance. Jesus met him physically. He says, Lord, the one who didn't know him at Lord, now know Lord, what do you want me to do? What shall I do? And he said to them, someone will come and take you and get you baptized and here he's talking about it in acts 18 8 and uh, crispus the chief ruler of the synagogue believed on the lord with all his house and many of the corinthians hearing believed and were baptized amen mark 1 14 to 15 now after that john was put into prison jesus came into galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of god and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent ye and believe the gospel and those who did got baptized so brethren um what we are saying here is do not go to be baptize anyone who is not born again but there are some errors in water baptism so we want to discuss about some of the errors and the brethren number one is those who take water baptism in place of salvation water baptism is not salvation it's not at all so I need to say that all the places we have read, the Bible says those that believe and they will be baptized. We've read long passages. So it's not. So those you asked, are you born again? They said, oh, I was baptized in 1902. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about have you given your life to the Lord Jesus? So what a baptism cannot because you don't know why the bible says being buried with christ so how do you get baptized when your sins have not gone to the cross to be buried with him amen it's not possible so let's not make the mistake of um going on to think that um water baptism is salvation it is it is not so that is very clear so the only reason is because people are, you know, when they are taught wrongly and they carried on and they don't know, or when you ask them and says, oh, I just got born again and they took me and then get me baptized. Is that water baptism? I didn't get born again. I just came to church. It's not. 
another error is using it as a church membership because people say oh i don't want to leave that church although i know they are teaching error but i was baptized in that church so how can i go to tell them to take my name off the register now your name can be in their register here but it's not in the book of life water baptism is not a way of growing the church or church membership is not number three um what another error is people baptizing so many times one two three four five and this is predominantly among popular preachers when you hear a popular preacher is coming to town and then he's taking people to things to baptize you go and they baptize you you hear another one come oh we're going to um israel and you'll be baptized at jordan you go with them to be baptized another one says oh we are going now to um egypt and to syria to see if we baptize at euphrates you go with them no that's error you are not crucifying and burying Christ several times if truly you are born again, you are. So you don't follow after so many because this is a popular preacher that came to town or you um, they, they've advertised something. Oh, we're going to Israel. When we get there, we baptize you and you go back on and on and on. It means you don't know the significance of what you have done in the first place. And that's the reason why we teach people. When you get bread and them when you teach them they wouldn't go into error another error is infant baptism infant baptism and then a uh, sprinkling water on children that's not what the bible says it, it took him and it was dipped in water in a mansion baptism so you don't baptize an infant it's an error and what was the story behind it? Baptizing people. Oh, I'm going to... Um, it's all started in error. Because they thought that being born again is doing some sacrament and doing some whatever they call it. So it's so ritualistic. It's so hard not to live in sin. So And uh, another erroneous teaching that when you are baptized, that's it. Your name has entered the register and you will go to heaven. And if you sin, you go into purgatory. All those teaching. Where did you get that? Where is it written in the Bible? A baptizing and then you spring cold water to a child who doesn't know anything. When the Bible says, he that believeth and is baptized. And what is the even the evil around it? You get someone to stand in for that child. How can... You get them to swear an oath to make um, pledges and to stand in. Oh, I will look after this child. Oh, when this, I'll teach him the Bible. And you're getting them to even sin more. And who is standing for this child? An alcoholic. Who is standing for this child? One who is a murderer. One who is in, in drugs. One who is a cheat. Is the person standing in? Can you, can you see? <laughs> can the blind lead the blind a man who has not looked after himself and you're giving him another person to look after it can never happen rather all those pledges they make people to take is pouring in coals of fire on people because they're not going to fulfill it the bible says that god hates the vow of a fool because it will never happen some people they don't even know that child i'm a victim of that not knowing when I was in the dark at the age of 14, I stood to be godmother to someone you can imagine. 14 year old. Do I know my left or my right? Became. And then sometime last two years, I got a call. Says, Who is your, um, your um, godson? I said, Hey, this one has not been revealed to me. I need to do my restitution. Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't even know him. Who stands for? So when they get us into things we can't even, a lot of people are going in, oh, oh, you know, under a blanket over them, not knowing that it's the vows they made they cannot fulfill because somebody put a yoke on us on our neck. A child, what do he says? Do you that believe it? And the irony around it or the ridicule around it is sprinkling the water. There was something out there on Facebook, I don't, whether it's real or not, and somebody was using this um, um, water gun to sprinkle water on a child, and it's it just like a joke. You don't baptize an infant, not at all.
it is still he that believe it give them the chance to come to jesus give them the chance to know who he is give them the chance to make up their mind to serve him to the rest of their life to understand what life is all about and you can baptize them so it's error another error peddling out there is the baptism with in the name of jesus only it's very tricky what do they go they go back to the book of acts chapter 19 verse 45 and quote that peter said or baptize them in the name of jesus so you don't have to then what has the words of peter got to do with the words no 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 not. how can the words of peter supersede the words of messiah king of kings lord of lords jesus himself the very god and very man said the elohim the creator of heaven and earth who owns the baptism said baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and somebody decided to pick the words of peter even at that when peter says baptize them in the name of jesus well he is god there's not even anything to dispute over it but the root of all those things are these non-trinitarian churches you might not know they don't believe in the trinity they don't believe in god the father god the son god the holy spirit they don't respect jesus they think the holy spirit is um he can you can play with him they have no clue who he is they call Jesus, oh, that's my brother. You can't. He's just like us. He came. And because they are non trained there's so many of them. They carry the Bible as we do. They do all sorts of things. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power they are of. Therefore, they cannot gel. They've not read their Bible. They've torn out of their Bible the book of John. So everything John said about the divinity of Christ, they don't have it. They don't know it and they don't want to read it or even in these days people are rewriting the bible they must have confused themselves by removing some and then adding some that's why we said to everyone be careful the bible you have in your hand it will either make you or mar you it will keep you stable or unstable it will ground you or grind you be careful for those of us who run after oh it's easier to understand oh it's this and that and they've removed the very things that make it the word of god the qualifying statements for every the, 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 the preceding ones they've taken away be careful jesus only they are the non-trinitarians they don't want to hear about god the son god the whole um, god the, god the father god the son and god the holy spirit so it's erroneous and then from that so um these are common errors remember we said don't baptize anyone who is not born again and then know why you are being baptized it gives you boldness to fulfill all righteousness to know that you've been buried with christ you are now resurrecting with him in newness of life there's no going back again you're dead to sin and trespasses and he has taken them and had buried and have you know taken them to the cross you are now declaring the new state some things i used to do i do them no more some places i used to go i go there no more some friends i used to keep i keep them no more there is a great change since i'm born again now many people also ask the question and say um what if i get born again but didn't get the chance to get baptized and the person dies what happens the lord knows you've given your life to the lord somebody like me got born again about two or three years before i had this teaching i didn't know about it i was born again with all my heart been already joined the prayer team going on um for morning cry i was out there you know in uh, just spreading the gospel nothing else loving jesus but nobody taught me i didn't know i was like the christians who didn't know about the 
Holy Ghost baptism. They were going with the baptism of John. I was going with the sprinkling of infant baptism. I didn't know. That's why brethren is good to teach our people. Stop running off from places where you will get placebo, where they are going to throw firecrackers at you with promises and then elect your spirit, but you lack the very teaching that will make you who you should be. Settle down. Settle and learn. The, 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 the disciples settled with Jesus for three and a half years. He was teaching them. They were watching and it was very difficult and absolutely difficult to take them out and they weren't taken out. But if you don't know the word and the root and you just want to grab, you are just, you know, your body, you can't stay in one place. You want this, you want that. You, you'll be a rolling stone that we gather no moss. Three years into being born again, I said, what? What I have is sprinkling of water, which is no baptism. I went to my dad and said to him, what is this water baptism all about? Do you know about it? He said, yeah. What do you think about infant baptism? Said, that's error. I said, but that's what you did to me. He says, it's error. But that's what our church is doing. But let, it was my dad who told me most of the things I wrote here. You can imagine. They knew the reason. See, it's wrong. We shouldn't be doing it. But because that's what the church is doing. But then when he heard I'm going to get the original, he wasn't really happy. That's what religion can do. It can blind. Brethren, let's teach everyone. Let's know the word. Settle down so that God can show you his precepts. So that he can show you his ways. So that you can be directed. So that you be, can be there to teach others. But when you jump around, you want to get the placebo. You want to get the heat. But not getting the real thing. It will be a bit difficult. May the Lord help us. To really teach water baptism and if you're coming into this class you don't know why you're why you got baptized in water now you can sit down and listen to this message again and if you got it wrong please let us know so that we can arrange in whichever country you are you are so that you'll be properly baptized and you will know why because it will help you not to go back again because you know the significance of what you have done let us pray father we thank you lord we give you praise thank you for being with us this evening thank you for your grace upon our lives thank you for teaching us this wonderful exposition opening our eyes to why we should be baptized in water heavenly father help us maybe there's someone out there like me who got born again and didn't know about this and they're coming into master class father help them to take the action and get says please can i be baptized and if there's anyone who had been in error heavenly father still open their eyes to know thank you father in yeshua jesus name we pray amen 